Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cozy little corner of the internet. I'm Penn and today I'm back with chapter 6 of The Life We Could Have Lived, This Life Was Made By Us by Zena Lemon. Uh, this is a really heartfelt story if you guys haven't seen any of the previous chapters. And just also a bit of warning, not really a warning, but there is gay, just pure gay, not too much gay, but a little gay. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to take some time to relax and take care of yourself. Let's get into this. Chapter 6 Rambo felt like he had just woken up from a really long dream. He doesn't know how to describe what happened in the past five minutes because it was honestly quite a lot. He did f feel like some break had been made with all the mem those these memories flowing in like crashing water, sweeping him away with it. He didn't know what if his memories were his own or something artificial. It honestly freaked him out, not knowing for once. He remembered leaving Fugazau's room and then having this cold yet warm enveloping feeling. He never had he never had felt something like that before. It happened when he bumped shoulders with Darzai, so he assumed it was his ability. With him not having one as much as he refuses to admit it, he never felt what it, never felt what being nullified felt like. But then again, he doesn't have an ability, so what did Darzai nullify? Also, Darzai in this universe shouldn't have one, so that so that would mean that the that the armed detective agency's universe Darzai is somehow here, and that helps solve the fact that Rampo is also mentally originally from the ADA universe. Okay, good to get that out of the way. He sat in his chair, his legs on the desk. Knowing that it was his break period, from these memories, he thankfully had had the whole period to think it over and recuperate himself. He glanced over to the glasses case on his desk after and opened and after opening it, found an identical pair to the one Fukuzawa gave him in his original universe. He put them on nothing. Rumpo signed to himself. Rumpo sighs to himself, I've done it before, I can do it again. He starts going over everything he knows, trying to solve this mystery without his glasses on. It reminds him of being back, reminds him of being in the book Poe trapped him in when they reconnected ye after years. Speaking of which, his eyes followed the black band to his left hand. Hmm. Rumpo recalls, can recall speaking specific memories up to this morning and every other memory in this universe is quite general and otherwise foggy like it didn't exist or it wasn't meant to or wasn't meant to be seen in full detail until this morning either way he remembers waking up rather in a rather comfy bed a raccoon between him and poe as a dark-haired man woke him up gently brushing the hair from his forehead and planting a small kiss Rumpo feels his cheeks heat up at the memory, the feeling being quite new to him as he starts to question if he's sick. He just hopes he doesn't run into Poe again today and tries to get back on task. He doesn't have an ability, but does identify something and that gave him his memory th that gave him his memories. So that would mean that this world or whatever link between the two sides uh, the two the link between this world or whatever the link between the two is product of disability. But why? He needs to know who else, if anyone else, his, has their original memories. Maybe it's just Darzai? Obviously the fact that he has his ability counted it enough that counted it enough to keep his memories. Would that mean he wasn't the main target? Anything directly affecting him would have nullified, would would be nullified. So it has to have some partial application or something, something that had affected him enough to fully nullify it. To, something that had affected him enough to nullify it, but not directly enough to for for it to be fully stopped. But whose ability was it, and how did and how does it work? Rumpo's mind was racing with questions that for once he had no answer to he hated it checking on his checking the rosters of his on his desk he finds Darzai's name on his seven period great i have to wait that long 
His eyes glance over the paper until they land on another name, Nakahara Chuya. Did this guy have a stick up his ass? Chuya was sitting in his third period, which happened to be economics with the guild leader. Well, he wasn't in this universe. Fitzgerald was going off on some vacation he went on with his family, and Chuya honestly couldn't care less. He had other things to worry about. His and Dazai's relationship was quite public. They always, there always seemed to be eyes on the two, especially when they were together, despite the fact that no one in this universe besides Tachihara actually came up to him. It seemed he was, it seems like he's quite popular, especially to the sportier guys. It wasn't constant conversations, but Chia would get his name called out at and waved to like five different times in the hallway. He wasn't big on attention, but it was okay. After using it on Rumpo and giving all his, and giving him his memories back, Dazai's ability seemed to disappear as soon as it came. As much as it was a letdown, it did prove the fact that this world was a product of an ability. This would probably explain why Dazai was able to retain his memories when it was created, but why did Chuya keep his? There were, there has to be another. There has. There was way more to discover, and he knew he could rely on Rumpo for help if he didn't figure it out himself first. Fukuzawa's class went by surprisingly fast. The man always had a knack for making people feel welcome while still being efficient. He had always preferred him to Mori as a, as a person and as a boss. Though he had to give it to Mori, he was he was the best fit for the mafia boss position but literally nothing else, not a teacher, guardian, or person in general. Quickly reading any thoughts of the viral man, he, ma- he made his way to the fourth period, and oh, it was going to be fun. Remembering his schedule, because Dazai had already memorised it, he knows Kunikita is awaiting him in the next class. Kunikita seems to have returned to his math teacher ways, and Dazai can't wait to annoy the hell out of him. The classroom came into view as as a certain feisty redhead does as well. Dazai runs up to him, throwing his arms around his shoulder. What? Get off me! Chuya yells before Dazai quickly covers his, the other's mouth with his hand. He leans over his shoulder and whispers, Remember, we're, we're, remember the actor we're supposed to be playing right now. Chuya sighs before, before glaring at Dazai. Dazai si- smiles and Chuya bites his hand. Dazai pulls his hand away before yelling. Ow, bad dog. Chia rolls his eyes and enters the classroom, running up running up the shorter one. Dazai quickly interrupts the two, interlocks the two's hands. Hey. Chia's face turns slightly red. He's definitely angry and Dazai loves it. Hopefully that's, that's just a weird psychological defect thing and that's not something sexual. Take responsibility for your action, Chibi. You hurt my hand and now you must make it feel better. Dazai gives him this look that reminds Chia that he shouldn't be surprised by these things. Chia acknowledges this but doesn't stop his face but it doesn't stop his face from reddening a little more. And the fact that Dazai was imply a little more at the fact that Dazai was implying holding hands makes it feel better. Totally angry. The two find a table at the back and sit down, next next to each other this time. A small group of girls approach the two as more students flow into the classroom. The girls seem a little nervous as they walk up to the, to the table. There were about three of them, but there, there seemed to be a group in the back at, that were watching. I heard you two were breaking up, but one girl explained, Exp- sort of explains mumbling, seeming confused, disappointed and relieved all at the same time as she sees the two together. Darzai dramatically gasps before wrapping his arms around Tria again. Why would anyone think I would leave my dear Chibi? The statement was quite ironic knowing his pa- their past. Their f- he feigns being hurt under the assumption as Darzai feels Tria tense under his arms. He's never had this hard of a time under, in undercover missions, so why is it so hard now? This world hates me. 
Chi is trying to control his expression but finds it hard to hide the fact that he cannot deal with anything about the situation right now. He can act. It's not as good as Dar's eyes, but he has but he has before. But something about this was too much. Ever since he had been con- consciously placed into this world, his mind has been filled more and more with thoughts. It's been unbearable. Chi swears to himself that it's probably some side effect of whatever's going on in this whatever's going on but damn it feels like every little thing does I does is just mess just messes with him oh yeah it's is just you guys are so it was totally inseparable that and we heard and you've been together for so long so when we heard the word break that you were taking a break well it felt like the end of the world the girl breaks from the girls break before wow the girls from before bringing him back to his thoughts nervously laughing well you don't have to go now go tell your friends that i and you are very much in love so they can drop whatever hope they have of being next in line darcy says matter-of-factly a little rude towards the end but judging by the girls faces he was right in thinking that the girls have already left, but Dazai still had his arm around Chuya. Chuya already was already dying inside because of this. He knew his body was stiff, but he couldn't bring himself to even lean into this weird embrace because his thoughts would spiral. Hell, even this was sending Chuya into the deep end. He hated what this world was doing to him, and he knew it was because of this. And he knew it was because because of this world. Because why would he think of Darzai like that? He still feels a little off from the last encounter, from the that encounter last period. His mind still filled with thoughts, as he says. He doesn't, as his thoughts say stuff he doesn't believe is true. But who is kidding? And even with the whole dilemma he's facing, trying to get himself to not shut down with contact with Darzai. The thoughts still linger, because of course I do. Darzai leans a little over to Chuya, before slightly moving his hand up and down the other's arm like he's trying to comfort him. Calm down, you're too tense, he whispers. Of course this sends Chuya into a short circuit. He wasn't used to Darzai being this touchy or carey. Adding to the unwanted thoughts, Chuya felt like he was going to explode. You don't need to keep up that act right now. You're being weird. Chuya tries to counter, lying just to get Darzai to stop touching him. Even though he doesn't want to admit it, he was fine He was fine with Darzai sort of holding him. He liked it even. Every part of his skin where Darzai made contact was on fire. His face would probably be as well if he wasn't concentrating so hard on preventing that. No can do, Chibi. These people are like hawks and they're probably watching over our every move. Darzai explains. Chu swears he's lying just to torture him more. It's just you're so touchy. I'm not used to it. Chiyo explains. Well, get used to it because you're not very believable, my dear Chibi. Stop calling me that. Eventually, Darzai practically pulls Chuya into him and Chuya hates the fact that he involuntarily leans into it. He wasn't expecting Darzai to be so warm. He honestly expected the bastard to be as co- to be cold to be cold like the fish he is. He glances up at Darzai, who seems to be smiling, not one of the fake ones he likes to hide behind. No, this was a genuine smile. Chia has honestly only seen him like that a few times over the seven years he's known him. Chia feels all these lingering thoughts disappear as he can't even hear the chatter in the room anymore. Darzai's embrace is b- being that comforting and des- being the comfort he desperately needed without realising it. Darz- uh, Chia feels like his mind is playing tricks on him because, again, Darzai looks like he's pla- practically glowing, like an angel, which is ironic for Chia to think, considering Darzai's demon-like reputation. But Chuya couldn't take his eyes off the brunette. The way his, he- his hair frames his face, 
His eyes are the perfect shade of honey brown that would become almost red when he wanted to. His smile, the way his lips turned up, they look so soft and kissable. Fuck. Tria honestly couldn't deny any longer. Whether he was influenced by some bullshit of this universe or not, he was extremely in love with Osamu Dazai. Okay, everyone, that was chapter six of The Life We Could Have Lived, This Life Was Made For Us. I really hope you enjoy it. I hope you see what I meant by, like, the little pre-warning of little gay, because Chuya is a gosh damn simp for Dazai. Maybe not simp, but he's head over heels, and we love a little enemies to lovers denying our feelings stuff. We always love that. Anyway, I hope you took care of yourself. I hope you relax and not working yourself to the bone because if I'm right, it should be exam season coming up for Americans, which I know most of you are. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to take care of yourself. As I said before, don't stress yourself too hard. You're going to do good, good on exams if this is coming up for you and make sure to take care of yourself. Bye.